Every great story seems to begin with a snake. Nicholas Cage. What the f is that meant to mean? The film doesn't even start with a snake. It starts with a spelling mistake. What do you mean that's how Americans spell it? Welcome to Retrospective. The Color Space is a 2019 sci-fi horror movie. I say sci-fi horror, but anything with Nicolas Cage instantly becomes a Nicolas Cage movie. The film, yet again, was based off another Lovecraft story. And unlike Reanimator, which strays from one early sci-fi horror to another, this sticks more closely to its short story roots. How people keep padding out these short stories in the movies, I will never know. Although it most commonly doesn't work. I'm looking at you, Maximum Overdrive. This short story was rewritten and even directed by cult favourite Richard Stanley. Like cult movies, he's not just really popular in cults. He's probably better known for his writing, but he did direct one of the more weird Terminator knockoffs, 1990s hardware. Between that and this film, there's more of a cinematic trickle, but this story centres around a more cosmic terror and not a robotic one. It's all about this Chipper family with their 2.4 children. I'm counting the kid as the fourth. The family moved to the New England countryside to escape the fast-paced life. The standard family unit is a little bit more shuffled around, not well shuffled, just a little. The mother is a cancer sufferer who's business minded, played by Jodie Richardson, who doesn't shy away from sci-fi horror, being she was in the excellent Event Horizon and the average BBC's version of Day of the Triffids. The father, Nick Cage here, is a horny painter with a great Trump impression. You're never gonna be a painter, Nathan, so you just get out of my sight, Nathan. The children are a little bit more thinly written. You've got Stoner Son, sure, why not? A daughter who misses the fast food and fast pace of the city. Just copy and paste some lines from another movie into your script. But to add a twist, she's also a witch. But I grew up in the 90s and noughties when that Scooby Doo episode with the Hex Girls was popular. So witches were everywhere. And this kid, who may as well be just a cardboard cutout of a kid. Although very well acted by Julian Hillard, a name you're not going to hear the end of until the kid goes into rehab for being an overworked child star. The kid's Billy in WandaVision, the young Luke in The Haunting of Hill House, and he's just been in The Conjuring 3. I'm just reading the writing on the wall, people. The kid's 2D because he's just kid number three in the story. If I slip and call this the colour of magic, just know I, I mean the colour out of space. I'm a big Terry Pratchett fan and I'll probably slip up once or twice. After food, everybody does the normal stuff. You know, goes to sleep with a Necronomicon. Don't read that. You know what happened last time. Groovy. Stony McStonison here is doing some space shit on his PC when he gets Jurassic Parked. And then a ring of purple hairs. Not the song or the stand. I haven't got that far into JoJo yet, sorry. Now, the purple haze is quite important. It's colour doubly so. The purple tone they use, it's actually more of a magenta. It's a colour that doesn't exist on a single wavelength. Here comes the boom. What? It's unlike, say, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet, or rugavaba, if you like. Magenta is a sort of mental mistake when red and blue are mixed via the optical rods in the eye, under very specific circumstances. Why is this important? I have no idea. I'm only 20 minutes into the film. But colour theory is that blue is good and red is evil. By using these colours to create more of an unnatural tone, meaning this thing's neither good nor evil, but both, and unearthly. But space rocks tend to be unearthly. Ah, this space rock looks a little bit more like an earth rock now. KG here raises alpacas, claiming they're the animal of the future. Because they're the animal of the future, remember? Growing them for their meat, but also their milk. Oh, no, oh. Lactose intolerant. <coughs> Bullshit. I know nothing about alpaca, but I'm sure they're used for their wool and very little else. We're introduced to another character not long after, a guy who's completely off the grid. It's Chung, from Cheech and Chung. Chung has a cat called G-Spot. This guy's really into water, like, really into water. Which is handy, because that's the cause of all the problems. What did I just say about the water? Witchy here is getting all purple rained on. And she sounds a little like Jennifer Tilly. It's so beautiful. Someone stole the rock! But left some flowers, that's nice. And although strange things are happening, it's not really till the night that things go really weird. Oh no, you broke the yolk! That's not how you cut carrots. So even the fact she cut her fingies, it's her lack of reaction. Time to pack the alpaca away. That's hard to say. Is it just me or does this dog look more wolf-like as we go on? This is where things start to really unravel. And by things, I mean time. Little Stoner Boy puts the alpaca away. But then they're back out again. So he puts them away again. And they're back out again. So he puts them away again. Like all this time stuff could really answer the dog looks like a wolf thing. Which he here starting to get some tummy trouble. But that's probably because of the water. Or maybe she's lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant. One division here witnesses the birth of a bug. A purple praying mantis with two too many legs and a couple of extra eyes. It's a hint of how the world is changing around the family. But as the people's minds unravel, so does time. 
and more importantly the animals around them genetically unravel. Changes started small with the insects, then larger with- Oh god is that G-Spot? Looks like the mole rat from Kim Possible. I think Cage is meant to be turning into his father, and I can only presume that his father's Donald Trump. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? Wash your hands for 20 seconds, Cage. Nick's starting to get some scales. Yeah, rub that ice on it with the dirty space water. Great idea. What did I just tell you about reading that book? A house in the woods is still a cabin in the woods. I feel this is the opposite of what I would do. If she starts yelling, I'll swallow your soul. I think the space rock is the least of your issues. Oh, I'll swallow your soul! <laughs> Swallow there. Then we get our thing scene. Well, you're not gonna get wool from that anymore. The light fantastic crawls around the ground a little before it grips the mother and Billy. Expect a lot of black here, because I don't think I can show any of this. The mother and young son get all fly merged. And father and Stoney here are freaking out. But she walks in pretty calmly. Ah, that's more like it. Kate here tries to escape in a dead car, and we finally get to see the local area. The purple haze has turned the flora and fauna into these unearthly forests. It all looks beautiful, but we've also seen the evil part of the mist, where living tissue is being merged with whatever is close. So we get that clump of llamas, and the sun-wife combo is now keeping in the loft. Sorry, I should probably really talk about the symbol scratching to our forehead. There's a symbol scratching to our forehead. That is all. Stony here hears the dog. Down the well? Don't go down the well. That's where the water is. I told you. Now you're all being purpled up. I should probably tie my theories up here, shouldn't I? Like, no one's getting out alive. Oh, it's Nick Trump! Oh the God, I mean, whatever happened to the good old fashioned concept of teamwork? So the well or the water is all timey wimey? Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. And the space rocks haze unravels time, DNA, and tries to work out what the best way is to make the planet more like its own. That's pretty obvious because that's literally happening. It's nudging time around to evolve and de-evolve creatures. Some of them are whoopsies like llamas and sun mom, but stuff like G-Spot and the flowers are being mutated into something more of its planet, kind of fitting its idea of what normality is. Humans might be too complex and llamas might be just useless. What they're gonna do with it, I have no idea. Thanos their world, maybe, I don't know. On the other end of that well hole, the one that just ate Stony is a universe or planet that goes around nabbing enough genetic material to try and fix whatever happened to its unseen issue on the other side. Oh, and mostly, you haven't told us what happened at the end. Well, mainly because I don't want to. And I can't really show most of it unless I want to go to YouTube jail. But I also think you should go watch this movie for yourself. There's elements of Stranger Things and The Thing. They're hard to say together. It's a perfect mix of the cinematic best and the historic fear of the unknown from above. Watching it, you can tell creators didn't just know cinema, but lived through it, and it uses Nicolas Cage's skill of chewing up the scenery with perfection. Don't forget, be kind, rewind. Next week we're doing Life Force, from 1985, a vampire movie that just got added to Amazon Prime. Don't forget to like, subscribe, pop by my Twitch every Wednesday and Sunday, and I'll see you next Tuesday.